everybody. Welcome to Mystery Quilt 2022. Um, I have a new video setup and a new audio setup, so hopefully this will be pretty cool for you guys. Um, I have like four cameras set up, so I have no idea where I'm going to be looking at any one time, so just bear with me on that. Um, so if you uh, want to participate in this mystery quilt, it's really going to be a simple one. Um, you can find the instructions or the instructions for cutting the pieces that you need um, on my uh, blog. Uh, that's DebraFilmer.com. Um, it'll be in the description below too, so you can uh, click on that and go get the directions for the cutting. And then this video is about the reveal of how to put the blocks together. So. As you can see, since I don't have to switch cameras, you can see them all at once. Um, this is the block that we're making. We're making a fish block. Isn't that fun? So um, I'll show you up here, the fishy. You see the fishy? Isn't that fun? Now I haven't stitched his tail yet. It's still open, but I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Um, so for my fishes, I made uh, the um, nine inch square, cut and the five inch square cut and I said that in my blog post so you can read all about that. Uh, I made those two because they will then fit together you see over here when you sew them together. See this is a the big fish and then these are the little fish okay the little fish and then where you don't want a fish you just put in a, a four and a half inch block right there so that's how that works. So um, I do have a picture um, of one that my mother-in-law made. Let's see if I can pull this picture out. Hang on just a second. Okay. All right. So this is a picture of her quilt. Isn't that fun? So maybe I show it over here. No? Yeah. No, that's no light. Okay. See? You got the big fishes. And little fishes, and up here you got this one fish. He's a rogue. He's just going off on his own. So it's pretty fun. And this one's going that way. <laughs> so that's what this quilt is. And I'll show you how to put these blocks together. So if you went to the blog post, then you saw how to cut the blocks. You saw what you needed. And um, so, yeah, we're going to put these together. So I could put the blue one here instead of the pink one, whatever. Or the blue one back here or down here. Like that. Oh, you can't really see that. How about up here? But there you go. Um, I chose this fabric. Um, I had it in my stash. It's just a, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a white and it's got little flowers on it, but to me they look like bubbles. So I'm trying to make sure that they all go the same direction. So it looks like the bubbles are all going up the same way. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to make the small fish, this little guy, little fish, to show you the technique. And all the fishes are made exactly the same way. Um, so let's put the blue in there. OK, so let's make this blue fish. OK, so I'm making these out of the selvage fabric that I made. And you can see that, I think I made another blog post on that, or a video, I think I made a video um, of how to do that. I cut my selvage square, I cut my squares for my fishes um, on the diagonal of the selvage because I wanted my colors to be going uh, up and down. If I had cut them, if I had cut the square like this, then my lines on my fishes would be going like that. And I thought that would look weird. I wanted it to go up and the fish to be up and down like angelfish, you know? So the first thing you want to do is figure out, well, first thing you want to do is cut it in half both ways. Let's get that done. So this is a five inch square. So I'm going to cut it in half. This happens to be a two and a half inch ruler. So I'm going to cut it that way, and this way, okay. Then I want to 
kind of pull it apart and see where I want, which one I want my head. I want either want this to be the head of the fish or this to be the head of the fish. I think this. So then I'll also need three of these blank squares, background squares. Okay, make sure they're all facing the same way. For me anyway. Now if you're using um, just one color square for this, it doesn't matter how you arrange it. Um, but for mine I have to be kind of particular. So, next thing you want to do is put, no, no, sorry. I'm trying to do this from memory. You want to lay these two one on top of the other like that. And then I'm going to cut this. Where's my ruler? I'm going to cut this corner, which is the corner right here, this corner. I'm going to cut that corner of both of them. Now, in this small fish, we're going to cut it to one and three quarters um, square. So we're cutting it down a little bit. And that's what makes these fins uh, smaller. They're not like half the block. They're a little bit smaller in the box. So one and three quarters for the small fish. There we go. And I just stacked them on top of each other so I got the same. I got the cut once. Okay, so they'll be like that. Okay? And then there's the tail. Alright, so take your background square and place it here. And this square where you want it there okay now the way to remember this if you're doing if you're doing this with striped fabric and you want to make sure that the daisies get put here as a fin instead of like that <laughs> okay so I want to make sure that my daisies go there is I fold it in half right and I lay it where I want it that's that's the corner I want it in and then I let it open up. And then I'm going to stitch right here from corner to corner. Let's call it a snowball. I'm going to snowball that. Okay. So I'll put this one here. Okay. Fold this in half to make sure I'm getting the right placement. All right. Like that. And then just let it flop open. And then I'm going to snowball that too. So, just pin this so I know where I'm at. I'm going to go from corner to corner, corner to corner on those two. Now, for the tail, I'll, I'll come back and do the tail. Let's go do these first. Okay, so I'm going over to the machine that way. Okay, so I'm going to sew from the very corner over there to the very corner here, straight line. Same thing with this one. Okay. Okay. Cut them apart. All right, back that way. Okay, so now I take it and I put it, yeah, that's where it's gonna go. All right, so I wanna cut off the triangle that I don't need. It's easier to do this if you flip it over so you can see the line that you sewed. And usually I just eyeball it, but I'll show you, you can do it this way. Just put the quarter inch on that line that you sewed and cut off that little, triangle piece. You don't need that. Cut off this one. Okay, those are gone. Okay, so this one's going to go up here. And these are essentially di um, identical, so it doesn't really matter which one goes on top, which one goes on bottom. Okay, so you can see the fins. There's the fins. Now I'm using my fingernail and I'm kind of just pressing this to the to the background. Press the seam allowance to the background. Okay, like that. 
All right, now for the tail, the tail is also going to be a triangle. So in my case, I have two triangles to work with. I can fold it like this, put my background square there so I know what I'm doing. And I can say, okay, do I like that tail or do I like that tail? That one, the white just washes out, so I think I'm going to go ahead and use this one. Okay? All right. So I want to keep it folded. Uh, there we go. And I use a pen. Oh, it's going to curve a little. Isn't that funny? Okay. I use a pen to pin it in place. We are going to sew this folded. It's several layers, but it works out okay. All right, so it's going to be sewn like that. Okay? So, you take these two, lay them over this way, and we're going to sew these together. This one. And this one. I just stick pins in them, not because they're lined up, <clears throat> but because I want to remember which seam I'm supposed to sew. Um, I can get over to the machine and sew this seam instead, and then I'd be like really not happy. So um, that just helps me remember which seam I need to sew. Here we go. <coughs> okay, so take the pin out. I know which one I'm supposed to sew. Line them up and stitch. Quarter inch seam allowance, always. All right, this one. Now this one's the one that has the tail, so it's kind of bulky. Just want to put that there and there and line it all up and the point should come to the corner. And you can pin this if you want to. Okay. Cut them apart. All right. So now you can see that this is the head because it's the square. And this is the fin with the tail. Okay. And I just leave that pin in there until I'm all done because it holds everything in place. Okay. Apparently there's somebody here. So that's how it's going to go. Can you see the fish? All right. So we're going to take this one and lay it on top of this one. Now, um, you can go over and press it, which I probably should do. But I don't because I like to live dangerously. So, anyway, um, you want to just nest those seams together like that. And nesting just means you put seam allowance to one side on one and the other side on the other, and then you butt them up against each other like that. Like a sandwich. All right, so we're going to sew that together. Make sure I keep the tail in place there. Okay. And there we have a fish. Now, the last thing that you do, which I still need to do on this blue one, this big one, is you take the tail and you roll it like you would doing a cathedral window where it's kind of curved and you just stitch that down with the machine. Um, I like to iron it first and then stitch it down and that way you get this curve, curved tail. It's really subtle but when you look at it in the um, in the full quilt they actually do look like curved tails. So, um, so I'm going to go iron those and then we'll go over and sew them.
Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna go sew these two. See how I ironed that over on this? I just kind of rolled it over and ironed it. It's gonna stitch in a curve like that. So we'll do that. Gotta make sure you catch it all. Just do the edge. Do this big one. Okay. There we go. What's going on here? Okay. There we go. Around the curve, just on the edge. Back stitch a little. All right. And there we go. There's a blue fish. And there's a little blue fish. So then I can move this out of the way. So then I can put these fish like there, maybe. Let's see. Can you see this? Maybe there and uh let's see. Let's put the blue in here. Yellow. Blue there. How about that? Whatever. Little fish school. Isn't that fun? And it's so, so easy. So easy to do. So that's it, Mr. Quilt. So the reason I did this Mr. Quilt in the first place is because I have a um, group on Facebook called Scrap Quilting. And uh, we finally reached a thousand members and now we're well over that. But when we did, I was like, we, I gotta do something. So um, I just thought, well, I'm working on this quilt. So I'll just share it with everybody else and do it as a mystery. And there you go. Oh, I forgot to mention on the large, sorry. I know this is still recording, so I'm going to say this. I forgot to mention that on the large fish, large fish, yes, um, the squares that you cut, you know, I, I cut these down, the little ones, I cut them down into one and three quarter inch squares so that we could do the fins. Um, on the large fish, you do them, you cut them down to, let's see three by three. So these two you would cut down to three by three. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention that. So sorry. I will put that in the blog post and in the stuff down below. I hope you've been enjoying our water and garden and our garden garden um, videos. Those have been really fun. We've been outside working hard. Um, not today though. It's extremely hot here in Alabama. Um, but so that's why I'm doing this video inside and I'm going to work on fish the rest of the day. spent the afternoon making fish blocks for my quilt and um, I could show you some of the ones that I made. Um, there's a purple one, a big blue one, and a pink one. Isn't that great? Yeah. I have a whole bunch more to make. Um, this is probably one of my favorites. The other one. He's probably going to be the rogue going north. Anyhow, uh, I have a whole bunch more to do. And then I will put them all in uh, the quilt. Uh, you can take these and um, put them in little schools, or you can put them in one big school, or whatever. So I'm going to play with it, and we'll see how it goes. Good luck with your quilt. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the uh, comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. <laughs>